Welcome everybody. Welcome uh, to this how-to video for the European SharePoint Conference 2018. Uh, we will talk today about configuring and controlling site design in SharePoint Online. I'm uh, Paolo Pielorsi from PCs.com and here you can find my Twitter ID if you want to follow me on Twitter. Few words about the site design uh, idea and then we will switch uh, to the demo environment and see how to configure and how to leverage the site design uh, in SharePoint Online. The overall idea of site design is to provide reusable templates to end users that will be able to create new sites, new modern sites, uh, automatically applying uh, uh, designs which will create uh, custom lists, uh, which will apply custom teams, uh, and more in general, which will customize, somehow customize uh, the uh, created sites. We can use the site designs targeting both modern team and modern communication sites. And basically, a site designer is made uh, just of a script uh, or of a set of scripts, uh, which can be defined uh, using a JSON uh, file, uh, which will describe uh, what are the actions, what are the steps that you want to uh, complete, to accomplish using your uh, site design. And uh, uh, when a site design is selected by an end user, what will happen will be that SharePoint will create a new site and will asynchronously apply the site design to the just created site. From an end user perspective, the end users will be able to uh, wait if they want uh, for the site design application, or they can just uh, later on uh, refresh or access the site and they will find the site design applied uh, to their target site. Keep in mind that at the time of this recording, the site design capability is still under preview. So if you want to use it, you need to be in a targeted release uh, tenant of Office 365, and it is not uh, fully available in the uh, full release, in the uh, global available release of the Office 365 uh, tenant. That said, uh, let me explain you a little bit more about how the site design works and then we will create and see how to create a, a custom site design. First of all, as I told you, they are based on a JSON file and those JSON files has to be, have to be installed in your SharePoint Online tenant using either PowerShell or a bunch of REST APIs. The available actions that you have are those for creating a new list, to apply a theme, a graphical theme, I mean, to set uh, the logo of your site or to add uh, navigation items. Plus one really cool capability, which is the capability to trigger a Microsoft flow. So that whenever you want to do something which is not included in the list of out of the box actions, you just need to use a flow and to trigger external actions to improve the overall capabilities that you have in your hands to apply a set design. You can have multiple scripts in a single in a single set design, and in a script uh, you can have uh, up to uh, 30 cumulative actions, uh, so that you can do quite a lot of stuff uh, when you create a new site and when you apply a site design uh, on a site. You can even execute a site design multiple times on the same uh, uh, site, and what will happen will be an update of the site design on top of the target site. So there will not be any destructive action, but you will always uh, uh, keep in sync uh, the target site with the site design that you will apply on top of it. That said, let me share with you a, an architectural idea that we promote as PMP whenever you want to create real enterprise level or real business level solutions based on site designs. So uh, you know that you can use uh, uh, different kind of actions, including the capability to run a Microsoft flow. So let's say that you have a SharePoint online, that you want to create a site and apply a site design on the site. Well, you can trigger a Microsoft flow, which will then just create a message in the blob storage queue of Visual, just to make an example. And based on that message uh, queued in the storage queue of Azure, you can uh, trigger an Azure function, which for example, using PowerShell, shell can do uh, custom stuff like, for example, applying a PMP provisioning template onto a target site. And that is exactly what I'm going to explain you how to do uh, using a bunch of PowerShell and some Azure workloads to have a full running solutions capable to provision a site, including a site design, which will apply a PMP 
provisioning uh, template. So uh, let me switch to my demo environment and let me show you what I mean. So here I'm in my browser and let me create a new site in this SharePoint Online session. Whenever I select to create a new team site, for example, as you can see here, I can select a site design to apply. I can select any of the uh, site designs, including one which is called the PMP site design, which is the one I just created in my environment. You can provide a name for your target site, which can be ESPC. 18 uh, webinar how to for example and once i will create the site it will take just a while to create the site collection and i will click the finish button to access the website you will see that and here we are you will see that there will be on the right side of my screen a small uh, dialogue this one getting a few things ready which is now triggering a flow and which will do the magic in background which will apply a pmp provisioning template to my site so how can we do that first of all uh, let's have a look at at how you can um, define a site design regardless if it is a site design using PMP or not using PMP. And in order to do that, you need to use the PowerShell management commandlets for uh, SharePoint Online. So you have to connect with SPO service to your target tenant, and this is my own tenant, providing administrative credentials. Then you can get the content of a JSON file, which I will show you pretty soon, and you can use the add SPO script command letter to add that JSON script as a site script to your tenant. Once you have done that, you will get back a global unique identifier, which will uniquely identify your site script at the tenant level. And you will be able to add a site design to the tenant, providing a name, providing a target, which can be 64 for a modern team site, or if I'm not mistaken, 68 for a communication site. And you will provide the global unique identifier of your site script. That will be one of the type of the site script that you can include in the site design. As you can see, this uh, argument is plural, site scripts, because you can provide an array of GUIs which will identify multiple site scripts that you want to apply. And if you like, you can provide even a description to better describe the site design to your end users. Once you do that, you have a new site design available in the drop down list that you saw uh, before. Just to show you what is the content of this Contoso Explorer's JSON file, let me open this file for you and let me show you what's inside. So I will use a notepad editor and this is my JSON file. As you can see, there is a reference schema and we have a bunch of actions, an array of actions. An action could be apply a team, another action could be create a list. But we can even have something more interesting, like, for example, a site design, which in the site script will trigger a flow of Microsoft Flow. And this will be the scenario that I just showed you. And through this one, I can provide the URL of the Microsoft Flow that I want to trigger. And I will be able to provide to this Microsoft Flow the URL of the site that has just been created. So let me switch uh, to my environment back again and let me explain you how you can register such kind of site design, including the Microsoft Flow triggering. So back to my browser. First of all, in order to um, register such a site design, you need to have a client ID and a client secret that you will use in your PowerShell script to do the uh, real provisioning through PMP. So using appregnew.aspx, you will register a new application. You will go to the app inventory at the tenant level, notice the uh, dash admin in the URL, and here, through the ID of the just registered application, you will be able to uh, uh, give to this application the uh, permission to run uh, in the app only mode. What I mean is that, for example, if I will use the ID of the application that I already registered in my tenant, I can make a lookup and I can retrieve the information of my application and I can apply the permissions to run in an app only mode for this application. 
Once I've done that, I have an identity, I mean a client ID and a client secret that I can use to run an app-only script, which will be the PowerShell script to provision my PMP provisioning template. Then you have to go into Microsoft Flows, so flow.microsoft.com, and there you will have to create a blank flow and to add an HTTP uh, triggering uh, uh, action, which will be used to trigger your flow. And when your flow will be triggered, let me show you the content of this flow. When your flow will be triggered, it will get as an input a JSON message, which is well documented on docsmicro.com. And this will be the URL to which your flow will be listening for new requests. Once you get a new request, you simply put a message in a queue, a queue which is a blob storage queue created in the Azure blob storage service. And here we are. Here I am in Azure, in an Azure subscription. I have an Azure blob storage service, and under the queues, I have a custom queue. Moreover, you can define an Azure function. So you can go under function apps, and you can add a new function. The function can be a function triggered by a message in a queue. So when you decide to create, uh, okay, of course, uh, I will lose this information, but I don't really care. So um, function app, for example, when you create a new function app, you can select to create a function app, which will be, for example, or we can even do that from here uh, to be faster. So let me go back here and let me just add a function here. Uh, you can select to add a function with all the experimental languages support. And as you can see, you have the queue trigger, which supports PowerShell. So you can select this option and you will end up having a PowerShell uh, console available in which you can write your PowerShell script, which will simply be a PowerShell script to connect to the target site and to apply a provisioning template using PMP. This will be whatever kind of PMP provisioning template you like, and you will have to retrieve the application client ID and the application secret that you've registered in SharePoint, simply configuring them in the uh, application settings of your uh, function app. That said, you will be ready to trigger your flow using uh, the site design and trigger the Azure function using uh, the uh, queue based message and the magic will happen because when you will create a new site using this site design you will have your site fully created and with all of the customizations that you like to have as like for example as you can see in this site i have a custom footer which is based on a sharepoint framework extensions that i built and that i provisioned using my provisioning template just for the sake of completeness, and I'm almost done with my how to demo. This is the content of my template. And as you can see here, I provision a custom action, which will simply activate on the target site my application uh, customizer and my extension, which will pop up in the UI and allow me to extend the UI of my site. So. That's a complex journey. You have to do multiple steps if you want to automate the provisioning of a PMP template through a site design. But this is really powerful because you can do a lot of stuff thanks to the capabilities of the PMP provisioning engine and of the full integration that you have between SharePoint Online and the site design and the Microsoft Flow support provided by the site designs. I think that's it. So I just want to switch back to the slide deck to say thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. And you can find the further details and step-by-step -step instructions on docsmicro.com under the SharePoint area. And there you will find a fully detailed article to uh, reproduce the same scenario that I just showed you. So thank you.